Yo, 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 it's your boy Luaka, I'm back at it again with another video. In this video, I will recap and review Pokemon Journeys Episode 112, A Triumphant Return, The Alola Champion, as well as give my predictions for Episode 113, The Last Mission, Catch Reggie Alecki and Reggie Draco. If you guys enjoy episode reviews as well as recaps each and every week, then I highly suggest you hit the like button and subscribe as it truly helps support the channel. I haven't been here to do an episode review since episode 109, but my good friend and half of the Pichu Bro Starmeister was here to fill in for me, so big ups to him. He did a fantastic job of continuing the reviews going while I was gone, and it'd mean the world to me if you would go and subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. But with all that being said, let's begin by recapping the events of episode 112. The episode begins with Ash, Go, Chloe, Lily, and her family riding the ship back to Alola, where a big homecoming celebration awaits. It's also Chloe's first time in Alola and she's excited for her and Evie to experience new things. Hala formally welcomes Moan back to his home, and Lily runs to Mallow, Lana, and Sophocles as they and their Pokemon get a sweet reunion. Hobbs, Wick, and Fab are here too, so it really feels like a celebration of the Sun and Moon anime. The party gets rolling with Ash and Go sending out their Pokemon to meet up with the Alolan gang. Mallow and her family of course were in charge of cooking the banquet. We also get to see a very cute scene between Sandy and Chloe's Evie playing around as Chloe asks Lana what Sandy wants to evolve into. Chloe opens up about her and Eevee meeting up with the various evolutions, but they're undecided as to which path to take. Lana tells her that there's another path, and that's to stay as an Eevee just like her Sandy, as well as Ash's Pikachu who wants to stay as it is. In another scene, Go glances at his surroundings, but he couldn't find Kyawe. Sophocles mentions that Kyawe left as soon as he heard that Ash and Lily are returning. The gang then finally mentions about Ash being the Alola champion, and they cheer him on in the upcoming Masters Class of the World Coronation series. Gladion leaves for the forest and sends out his five Pokemon. At Kukui's house, he explains to Go and Chloe the details regarding the Battle Royale. Kukui reveals that he's also participating in the Battle Royale, but Ash asks if he could go as the Mass Royale instead. So we get a brief scene of Kukui and Ash cosplaying as the Mass Royale and Ash Royale. But Kukui tells him that he's not going to be the Mass Royale for this fight because the real star of this battle should be Ash, who is the champion of the Alola region. The next day arrives and look, it's me! Now you know why I've been absent all this time. Sorry guys, I didn't tell you that I went to Alola to watch the Battle Royale myself. Anyways, the Battle Royale is about to begin and we even see how Guzma and Team Skull all watching the battle from the bleachers. Wick and Faba turn out to be the hosts of this match and start by introducing the participants of this battle royale. The Alola Pokemon League Champion Ash with his Pikachu, the Alola Pokemon League Founder Kukui with his Incineroar, Kukui with his Alolan Marowak, and the Alola League Pokemon Runner-Up Gladion with his Lily, the Nihilgo. We then get a flashback of Gladion training with his Pokemon until Lily butts in and says that it wants to battle in its behalf. Right off the bat, Marowak, Lily, and Incineroar gang up on Pikachu as he takes three powerful hits in a row. Next, Pikachu manages to avoid a series of attacks and lands an Iron Tail onto Incineroar. The three contenders again try to attack, but this time Pikachu deflects it with Thunderbolt and proceeds to trap Incineroar with his Electroweb. Kukui's Incineroar's Throat Chop clashes with Pikachu's Iron Tail, Lily unleashes a Meteor Beam hurting both Pokemon. This gives the opportunity for Kyawe to attack Gladion with Marowak Shadow Bone. Then Kyawe and Gladion argue both saying that they both want to be the person to defeat Ash. The battle suddenly shifts to Kyawe vs Gladion, and with Iron Head, Marowak is able to finish off Lily, avenging Kyawe's loss to Gladion in the Alola League. Despite losing first, Moan and Luzamine are still proud of their child. Anyways, Kyawe decides to go all in and fires an Inferno Overdrive into Pikachu, but Pikachu uses his Thunderbolt to propel itself, invading the Z-move. Incineroar then makes quick work of Marowak with Darkest Lariat, and now it's down to Ash vs Kukui again. Ash and Kukui remember their epic battle back at the Alola League, and suddenly the entire audience cheers for Ash and calls him their champion. Gladion, Kawe, and Kukui let out their final cheer for Ash in the Masters 8, leading Ash to toss his hat over to Pikachu, and we get an amazing clash between Malicious Moonsault and 10 million Volt Thunderbolt. As the lights grow brighter from the collision of two of the most powerful Z-moves, the scene transitions to Ash and Pikachu watching the Alolan sunset as they're being approached by Kukui. Finally, Tapu Koko appears and gives Ash the much needed blessing and guidance for his upcoming tournament. Being rekindled with the Alolan spirit, Ash is now more than ready to take on the Masters tournament in the Pokemon World Coronation series. This episode was a nice little reminder of how popular and loved Ash is in the Alola region. We got showered with amazing shots visually, and the OST was super clean in this one. I legit got chills in the Battle Royale with the flashback of Ash's victory over Kukui and the crowd chanting Champion. Basically, everyone who was important in the Sun and Moon series was featured in this episode at one point or another. We got a shot of both Hao and Guzma, and it was nice seeing them again, albeit very briefly. Heck, even I made an appearance in this episode going to see the Battle Royale, so if you're wondering where I was the past few weeks, let me just say that the battle was more intense in person. This episode did a fantastic job of propping up Ash for the Masters 8 tournament, which will begin in just two weeks. They showed us how powerful he was during the Battle Royale going against three very competent trainers by himself, and even though they ganged up on him tremendously, he didn't back down. Granted, it wasn't my favorite thing, but it did happen. 
Gladion going down first was a surprise, but a welcome one. He is battling with a Pokemon that he hasn't used in battle before, and he went down to Kyawe who got a nice little revenge on him from the Alola League. Finally, the little bonding moment between Lana and Chloe was great. She emphasized that maybe the path that Eevee will go down is just to stay as an Eevee, and that's okay too. I mean, look at Ash's Pikachu for crying out loud. Overall, I'll be giving this episode an 8.5 out of 10. A fantastic episode that didn't lack too much, although the first few minutes were flooded with panning still images. That's my review for the episode, now let's take a look at the preview trailer for episode 113 and make our predictions. The preview shows Go entering what looks like some sort of ruins for his final Project Emu trial mission. He's then seen hopping over platforms, so the setting is probably like an ancient place with lots of puzzles and traps scattered around. Gary is also here and it looks like he and Go will have to work together to win this trial, especially since Lila and Shunya are here too. I think it's super cool seeing Cinderace kicking off the Hydro Cannons of Blastoise, it goes to show how Go has gone far from his team building skills. I predict that Go and Gary will succeed in catching Reggie Alecki and Reggie Draco, earning them enough tokens to be the Project Mew Chaser for Go. I think that Go is going to catch Reggie Alecki and Gary is going to get Reggie Draco. As for the final spot, that's probably going to Tokyo, but last time we saw him, he's ranked below Lila. Since he's not in this trial mission, I think he's going to be in another location getting Project Mew tokens, and since Lila is here and doesn't get them, maybe that's what's going to put him over the edge. They could also surprise us and have Lila stay as the final chaser, because she can really add a lot to the team dynamic once they begin searching for Mew. This episode definitely has a 10 out of 10 potential, so I can't wait to see what has in store for us. So yeah, that's my review for Pokemon Journeys episode 112, as well as my predictions for episode 113. If you guys enjoyed it, I highly urge you to hit the like button and subscribe as it truly helps the channel. I make episode reviews every week just a few hours after the episode airs, so if you enjoy these reviews right after the episode, you know where to come. Today's comment of the day is with Alola getting some recent love, which region do you think is the most underrepresented in Pokemon Journeys? In a series where they try to show off every region, it was definitely skewed for Galar, Kanto, and Sinnoh, but all those three make sense. For me, I'm going to say Hoenn because it got done the dirtiest in general, in my opinion. But maybe you have another thought. Again, if you made it this far into the video, I truly, truly appreciate you. And as always, it's been your boy Luap, and I'm out. Peace.